Hello ladies, gentlemen, boys, girls, innies, outies and in-betweeners. My name's Dan. Welcome back to another Pack Reports. Today is Friday the 6th of March 2020 and today we're starting with South Wales Police Constable from Gwent Police, 26-year-old PC Alexander Clark. Thanks to Bert for the link to this one. Clark has been dismissed from the force without notice yesterday after allegations of misconduct were proven against him. Clark had had his phone seized by colleagues who were investigating another case, which conveniently, the details of which had been omitted, where they found images and video of Clark in full uniform, in his patrol car, choking the chicken, spanking the monkey, shaking hands with the milkman, cuffing the carrot, playing five on one, beating his meat, battling the purple headed yogurt slinger, jerking the gherkin, or otherwise known as having a wank. Clark had admitted to the act, which based on yesterday's report, should see him with a simple telling off and a learning from his actions, but instead was suspended on June 18th last year, just five days after taking the picture and video in the car park outside Newport Central Police Station. Clark admitted taking the picture and video, but insisted his penis was sore, so he needed a closer look. However, the presenting officer, Kay Gladwin, said, The recording clearly shows him masturbating in a police car, 37 minutes after taking the photo. His claims that it was sore are not accepted because he clearly carried out a sex act just 37 minutes later. PC Clark was on duty and therefore neglecting his responsibility as a police wanker officer. He behaved in a way that discredits the police. Well, we know that most of them are wankers anyway. In defence, Nicholas Walker, representing Clark, said, It goes without saying that this was the most monumentally stupid thing to do, and I know that anyone, having seen the bare facts, will be dismayed by this case. However, it cannot be said that there was an intention to share the imagery. He is a young man who found himself in a toxic relationship. If he wasn't back from a shift on time, he would find himself locked out of his home and have to sleep in the car. And whose fault is that, Clark? If, if you're with somebody that treats you like that, then kick their ass to the curb. I don't know anybody that goes, oh, my partner's been an arsehole, I'm gonna go for a wink. Nicholas Walker added, now prepare yourself for this one. This was a young man, not in a normal frame of mind. <laughs> there it is, the good old mental health defense, and you know, the kind of thing we've come to expect. Amazing. Not a single mention of court proceedings for indecent exposure or outraging public decency, which I have no doubt would have been the very least we would have been charged with had we been caught doing the same. The investigation concluded that his behaviour did in fact amount to gross misconduct and breached the standards of professional behaviour in relation to duties and responsibilities and discreditable conduct and a bit of self-abuse, light-handed relief. Solitary sex, five finger knuckle shuffling, self stimulation, juicing the plum, churning man cream, peeling the banana, flogging the bishop, roughing up the suspect while on duty and in uniform. Clark will also be added to the College of Police barred list, preventing him from returning to any role in policing in the future. Roughing up the suspect, by the way, is another way of saying wanking. Next, we have a story that's been sent to me by Shook1LDN, Ian, Charles, D, and many others. National Action is a prescribed group, which ultimately means a terrorist group or organization banned under UK law. And that fact is evidenced in this government document listing prescribed groups in the UK, which says, National Action is a racist neo-Nazi group that was established in 2013. It has a number of branches across the UK which conduct provoc provocative street demonstrations and stunts aimed at intimidating local communities. Its activities and propaganda material are particularly aimed at recruiting young people. The group is virulently racist, anti-Semitic and homophobic. Its ideology promotes the idea that Britain will inevitably see a violent race war which the group claims it will be an active part of. 
The group rejects democracy, is hostile to the British state, and seeks to divide society by implicitly endorsing violence against ethnic minorities and perceived race traitors. National Action's online propaganda material, disseminated via social media, frequently features extremely violent imagery and language. It condones and glorifies those who have used extreme violence for political or ideological ends. This includes tweets posted by the group in 2016 in connection with the murder of Joe Cox, which the prosecutor described as a terrorist act, stating only 649 MPs to go, and a photo of Thomas Mayer with the caption, don't let this man's sacrifice go in vain, and Joe Cox would have filled Yorkshire with more subhumans, as well as an image condoning and celebrating the terrorist attack on the Pulse nightclub in Orlando, and another depicting a police officer's throat being slit. <laughs> That's this video demonetized. The videos can reasonably be taken as inferring that these acts should be emulated and therefore amount to the unlawful glorification of terrorism. Well, it appears that the Metropolitan Police's counter-terrorism group have arrested a 21-year-old serving police constable for having affiliations to that group. A spokesperson for the Metropolitan Police said he is being held on suspicion of membership of a prescribed organisation linked to right-wing terrorism. Officers are searching the address where he was arrested. A mandatory referral to the Independent Office of Police Conduct has been made. They added, while the investigation remains ongoing at this time, there is nothing to suggest that there is any threat to wider public safety in relation to this matter. Well, we'll see where this one goes as more news becomes available, but at the moment that is quite literally all there is. Thanks to John for this next story. 67-year-old Mafamwe Elliott, no relation, was accused and arrested in October of stealing a box of headache tablets from a co-op store in Mechentheth, Powys. The family was subsequently charged and ordered to attend court over the matter after a shop assistant found a box of painkillers in her bag, but she said they were her own. The store assistant said she did not scan the tablets because the 67-year-old told her they were from Spa. She was allowed to continue scanning her items and left but CCTV from the store was later obtained and the allegation emerged. Now, all of the crimes that are happening in this country and with police apparently at a stretch and the police funding being so heavily reduced, you would imagine that this case would be the example in training for a community resolution order. The CRO would have saved the police many hours and many pounds. However, Mafamwe denied any wrongdoing, and so in this instance, the police took it to court. Now, I think we have all heard of instances where the police have told people that their assault against them or, or the theft, etc., isn't being followed up because it's not in the public's interest. This was an alleged theft of a £1.80 packet of paracetamol. But rather than simply use the good old, not in the public's interest, they decided to take the 67 year old to court, no doubt costing several thousands. Mafamwe was however subsequently found not guilty of any theft by a jury, meaning that not only did it cost for the investigation, it cost for the preparation and attendance at a magistrate's court for the initial plea. Then it would have gone to Crown Court, again costing in administration costs and investigation costs, legal costs. You get the picture all over a £1.80 box of paracetamol. Unfucking believable What an absolute waste of taxpayers' money. Thanks to Charles for the following. The Home Office have released a report this month into the trends and drivers of homicide, which suggests that the rising homicide numbers are linked to the fall in police numbers. Evidence suggests more police officers means fewer homicides, if all else is equal, the Home Office report says. But what does if all else is equal even mean? Ah, got it. It's their get out clause. <laughs> it's their get out clause so that when they do have more police on the streets and the homicide rate doesn't decrease, 
they can simply fall back on that statement and make up a reason as to why the police are not helping to lower the numbers. Clear up rates for most crimes, most notably robberies, have fallen sharply in England and Wales since 2014. And the 80 page report suggests the rise in homicides could also be due to violent incidents that escalate or offenders progressing from less serious crimes. So now they're suggesting that petty crooks are all going to turn into murdering lunatics. The government is promising to hire an extra 20,000 police by 2023 at a cost of 1.1 billion. There are currently 123,171 police officers in England and Wales, down from 143,000 in 2010, which means the government is suggesting that a 15% decrease in police is accountable for a near 40% increase in homicides. Not so sure about that, but let me know what you think in the comments. The report also shows most homicide victims and suspects between 1997 and 2018 were white. Isn't that simply because we still live in a predominantly white country? Is that not to be expected? People born in Pakistan were the next largest group of victims, while those born in Jamaica were the next largest group of suspects. The study also shows in 2017 to 2018, black people were 4.7 times more likely than white people to be victims, eight times more likely than white people to be suspects, and between 2014 and 2018, the number of black suspects rose by 41%, while the number of white suspects fell. I'm not being racist, but surely that must tell you something. Most white people, however, live in wealthier neighborhoods compared with just 17% of black people that have half as many homicides. Given the strong relationship between deprivation and homicide, it seems likely that deprivation explains some of the disparity the report's authors say. Well, personally, I don't think it's to really that much to do with the decline in police numbers, although I do think the police and government do have a hand in the rise in homicides. What do you think? Let me know below. I'll also link to this 80 page report in the description. A convicted burglar described by a sentencing judge as a classic psychopath, should have tried out for the police, had been freed after probation service error two months before he embarked on a cocaine and vodka fueled rampage. A serious further offender review carried out by the Ministry of Justice, published Thursday the 5th of March, said the most significant issue was the repeated failure to recall Joseph McCann or to reflect critically on earlier decisions not to recall him in the face of both court and prison staff communicating their concerns. From the point where McCann was arrested for burglary in 2017 to the point of his release, there were eight occasions where recall was considered or the recall decision was questioned. These all represented opportunities to recall. If the probation service had recalled McCann, he would not have been released until the parole board was satisfied that his release could be managed in the community. However, Joseph McCann was allowed to go on to commit more serious crimes until he was eventually handed 33 life sentences for a spree of abductions and rapes against women and children in April 2019. The South East and Eastern National Probation Service, which was responsible for McCann's supervision, was one of 21 rated as requiring improvement when it was inspected in May last year. It showed failings in key areas like workload and staffing. In findings published in September, inspectors called on the government to intervene after warning that probation officers handled high-risk offenders were buckling under the pressure of workload and staff shortages. As of March, the division was supervising more than 16,000 criminals and just over 35% were proven re-offenders. It concluded that more could be done to identify and manage the risks. More than a third of inspected cases were not being reviewed when circumstances changed, and only half were properly focused on keeping people safe, according to the report. It added staff relied too much on the individual's explanation of their offence rather than corroborating facts and other sources. I mean, this, this whole lack of manpower excuse has got to start becoming useless soon. They've been using it for years, but most people just simply lap it all up. 
that whilst I'm not suggesting there isn't a shortage of people in these roles, I still think that the increased number of crimes and other offenders are the result of the initial government and police interventions, investigations, and the way they deal with criminals and how they deal with non-crimes. Man hours on actual crimes would increase significantly if the police actually took them seriously over such things as hurty word crimes or so-called hate crimes. Start treating crimes for what they are and not for who they are against, then the manpower on those crimes will actually increase. Thanks to whoever you are who sent me a link via the channel WhatsApp group for the following. This is new news, so there isn't a huge amount of information yet, but at 1.25 yesterday, the 5th of March, officers from Prison Corruption Unit at the Northwest Regional Organised Crime Unit arrested a 24-year-old prison guard from Broughton. This man was working at HMP Berwyn in Wrexham and was arrested on suspicion of misconduct in a public office, conveying a prohibited article into prison and money laundering and taken into custody for questioning. Detective Inspector Dawn Hampson of the Northwest Regional Organised Crime Unit said, We work closely with HMPPS to target those in involved in corruption within prisons and today's arrest is another example of that work. The vast majority of prison staff are upstanding, honest and dedicated individuals and I hope this arrest encourages them to report any activity they suspect may be corrupt so we can take action. HMP Berwyn is committed to work with the Northwest Regional Organised Crime Unit in challenging all forms of corruption. I'll follow up on this report in a future PAP report, so make sure you don't miss any. Hit that bell button when you subscribe. Finally, we have this, which was sent to me by Sam through email. Yesterday, former police constable Daniel Priest from Gwent Police, whose conduct was found to have breached the standards of professional behavior relating to honesty and integrity, and discreditable conduct was proven. 33-year-old Priest, a former Wales youth rugby player, left the scene of an accident after crashing his vehicle last year. When police arrived at his home after tracing him through his vehicle, he claimed his younger brother Nathan had been driving it. It emerged that Nathan was in fact in Egypt at the time. At Newport Crown Court in September last year, Priest admitted to perverting the course of justice and was jailed for 24 weeks. At the time, Priest's defence said that his client had been struggling with work stress and a breakdown of his marriage, adding it had been an incredibly stupid thing for him to do. We love that good old stress-related excuse here. Anyway, the hearing at Cardiff Central Police Station, chaired by Chief Constable Matt Dukes of South Wales Police, found that the breaches amounted to gross misconduct and that priest would have been dismissed from the force had he not already resigned. As a result of the hearing, priest's details will now be added to the College of Police barred list, preventing him from returning to any role in policing in the future. Detective Chief Constable Amanda Blakeman said, former officer priest has been convicted of a criminal offence and his behaviour contradicts the high standards we expect of all our staff, whether on or off duty. The purpose of the police misconduct process is not just to hold officers to account for their actions, it is to maintain public confidence in the police service. Yeah, right. Uphold high standards, deter misconduct and protect the public. Therefore, it is right that we have continued with these proceedings to ensure that former officer Priest is unable to return to a role in policing in the future. Big thank you to the first Patreon supporters, Motty Lad, Holly, AD and Dave, whose support is helping me to continue providing you with this daily content. Anyway, that's all I have for you today. Please like, share, comment and subscribe. Let me know your thoughts as I know many of you will. And until next time, stay safe, look after each other, film the police and other officials. Good night, Don. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you like the content and you'd like to help support the channel, you can do so. In the description of every video, there are some links to ways that you're able to help support the channel so I can continue putting out content. If you're unable to help us in that way, 
hit that subscribe button up the top there if you haven't already become a subscriber that is support enough share the videos comment like it all helps if you're looking for something else to watch up top there is my latest video down the bottom there is a video that youtube recommends for you